See, when we take Leeway for a walk, he just stays right next to us. You don't even have to tug on the leash. He doesn't, he doesn't pull on the leash. He just stays right next to you. If we stop, Leroy, stop. He just stays. A lot of times we'll just let go of his leash and leave it on him like that. Come on. Go back to the bus. We'll go back to the bus. That's a good boy. What'd you find? So we really want to get Leroy the uh, halo collar. It's like an invisible fence, but it's set up through GPS coordinates, so you don't have to bury uh, metal lines or anything all over the place. And he'll, he'll learn the... He's been trained for invisible fence before. He smells something now. But that's what I'm worried about. Is some kind of animal out here. We have coyotes, deer. I don't want him getting after something and chasing it and running off and not knowing how to get back home or something. So the GPS map where we can keep him away from the edge of the cliff because he's got, he only has one eye, so he doesn't have depth perception. But I still want him to be able to enjoy parts of the property. But I don't want him going back in the tick infested woods over there, things like that. So I want to give him free range to be able to roam around a little bit. Um, I said he doesn't pull on the leash. He would just stay right here. I could let go of this. He'd be fine. But if we see, you know, if, if an animal comes out, I don't know what he's going to do. But he's super smart. And Halo has a special right now. I saw a coupon on their website, Holiday 200. It was $200 off. Um, it also, when we're on the road, if he somehow gets out of the bus or gets lost, you can track him with the GPS tracker on that collar. And that's one of the great benefits to it. Hey, Leroy, he's really... He's, he loves sniffing out here. It gets tension. He's not. <laughs> he just doesn't want to hang out. But you can see he's just circling around me. He's not pulling on the, on the leash. And just uh, one little finger. I mean, he's a St. Bernard. If he wanted to go off a different direction, he could. Come on. He just likes to stay right next to you. Come on, buddy. Hey. Leroy. Sit, not in the puddle. That's a good boy. Can you show him how smart you are? No shake. Oh. <laughs> good boy. Come on. I just got your butt dirty. Mom's gonna be mad now. <laughs> so this is the 98 uh, Dodge, 98 and a half Dodge Ram 3500. It does have the Cummins 24 valve Cummins in it, uh, the turbo diesel. Engine runs great, super strong. It uh, doesn't use any oil or anything. That's a great benefit from it. So we got this from George in Missouri. Um, several people commented yesterday about how our four-wheel drive isn't working. So George had this in his shop. The truck was parked outside, and he had the whole front end apart on it and on the workbench, rebuilding the front differential and replacing U-joints and everything. So he's got the entire thing, all the pieces inside his shop on the workbench when the tornado hit and the tornado took out his building and he never found any of those parts from it. Um, so that's why all that's missing. We're just gonna end up needing to find a whole new axle that we'll swap in and get it back to four wheel drive. Uh, this truck survived the tornado real well. Uh, windshield was cracked. It's got a bunch of dents in it and things like that from debris. Uh, another truck that was parked next to it, the whole roof was caved in. Another truck on the other side, everything was smashed. All of the glass or most of the glass was smashed out of it and really banged up bad. Uh, but this one survived pretty well. So I'm not really concerned about the body condition on it. It's a good solid truck, very little rust on it. Um, and the engine is super strong. We knew that the drivetrain had some issues and transmission and stuff like that. So we're working on it slowly. Uh, we'll get it up and going. We'll have a really nice shop truck here or yard farm truck when we're done. Um, it is Tyler's truck, uh, but we have the ability, it's gonna be kept here at the property. Uh, and then he'll be, when we got this, he was gonna be moving here in, in August and then that didn't happen because of COVID and everything. So once he does move here, uh, the truck will be here for us to use uh, towing, you know, hopefully we're going to get that bulldozer and backhoe and stuff like that And we'll be able to tow all that kind of stuff here to the property with this It's got a great towing capacity on it uh, But again, we'll get it sw swatched back over to uh, for full four-wheel drive and and go from there, but uh, It is a really good truck uh, It has been molested a lot uh, I got to get in there and find out exactly what rear end is in it so we can get the correct gearing for the front for the four-wheel drive uh, I don't want to just go by the VIN number because things have been messed with um, it's been through several owners. It's, it's got 
pretty high mileage on it. We don't really know what it has. The odometer quit working about 280, which would be low miles, but I'm fairly certain that it quit working a long time ago in its life. So it's probably got many, many more than that. It's not the original engine that's in it. It is a later model, better engine. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the Cummins, the 24 valve, uh, but whatever the block design is a better in this one. Um, they used to have a different version that would crack or something. I don't know what Tyler said, but this is the upgraded one. So it's not the original engine that's in it, but it is a great 24 valve Cummins that's in there. Uh, it is an electronic injection pump, not the manual one. Um, that is the only downside to it, but uh, everything seems real good with the engine. So not, we're not really worried about any of that stuff right now. When I had the drive shaft out and I saw all the rust on it, I knew the bearings were gonna pretty much still look like what I see here. The races look way better than I thought they would, but obviously I'm not gonna just replace one without the other, but um, yeah, those are, this is actually the better of the two. <laughs> That's not how a bearing is supposed to look. I did notice a chunk out of one of these too. In the corner. Maybe more than one, I don't know. But yeah, it's just all pitted to craziness. And all that metal that is missing there has gone through the other bearings too. So the whole rear end is gonna look like that. Uh, it might not be quite as rusty, but it's gonna have wear. So I, everything in there is going to end up needing to be replaced. I ordered a new socket to a 9 16 for the Dodge 3500 rear axle here. Um, and I ordered a new nut for it too, because the old one, somebody had used a chisel on it. It was pretty nasty looking. Um, so I just figured for a couple extra bucks, get a new one, be done with it. So yeah, the new brakes are considerably thicker than what's on there now. <laughs> um, I'm going to take apart the rear end, take the diff cover off, and just clean everything out for right now. Get all the oil and nastiness out of there. It's going to need new bearings and everything too, I know. But for now, I'm just going to get it, all the oil out. And get everything cleaned up on this end. That way, when I put my new wheel bearings and races when they come in today, on this side, at least none of that contaminant oil is going to make its way back over here on this side. Uh, and then I'll work my way that way on the axle and get the rear end done. New bearings, races, get that all rebuilt. I don't even know what kind of condition the ring and pinion is going to be in with all that water apparently in there um and then obviously the other wheel bearing is going to need to be done too so just one one step at a time got the new bearings and races so i'm going to get ready to go get those pressed in the hub <laughs> 